Good morning. Good morning. It is great to see all of you this morning. Some announcements that I have. Uh, first, it's good to see all of you this morning because for the next two Sundays at least, we will not be seeing each other live. I'm going to close down live worship for the next couple of weeks. Uh, the COVID numbers in our area are increasing. It's affecting the school systems, and so in order for us to be safe, to do no harm in the words of John Wesley, uh, I've decided that we probably would be good at least through the end of November uh, to postpone our live worship. Uh, so I will be streaming. What we're doing now, including starting this morning, is our streams will be one hour later than normal as I'm going to record our service instead of having the glitches that we've had for months now. Uh, finally, somebody got bright and said, well, why don't we just record this and post it afterwards? So service will be here, but you can sleep in an extra hour next Sunday and the Sunday after if you would like to. Um, so my essential staff are able to be here, but I'm going to close down live worship. The numbers being higher, being consistent with what we're about as a church, as a Methodist people. And also to set an example for our community that we really need to be paying attention to what's happening around us. Be mindful of our patrons, in our case, our congregation and our members, and just being proactive to what is going on. Not an easy decision by any means, but I think it is one that right now is necessary, and so we will see where we're at in, in, in two weeks. But through the end of November, I'm suspending live worship. We are looking ahead at what Christmas Eve might be like, and I'm going to be talking with a few people, but consider this. Maybe we have a couple shorter services on Christmas Eve, which will allow us to be able to space people out and yet still have opportunity for those. We can comfortably, safely distance with about 40, 45, maybe even 50 in attendance at one time. Um, so my thought being is that if we limit that to about 40 or 45 for either service, they give people an opportunity to then select which one that is so that we can safely do that. I think we have some opportunity there, and I believe we can still then have live worship for Christmas Eve. That's our thought process right now. Obviously, something to change with a lot of things. It's a very fluid situation, but consider that. Tell me the pros and cons. Tell me if you like the idea, don't like the idea. Uh, what you would think about that, and, and we'll kind of see where we go from there, okay? So we all kind of on board with that and our understanding this morning. I appreciate that. Continue to pray for all those around you. We all know those who have been touched by this disease, and we're going to pray and give God glory for his hand at work in just a little while as well through that. Uh, some other announcements, a reminder, Operation Classroom, we have envelopes for that. That is a part of our missions team. And I think I heard that Mops and Moms Next has also latched onto that idea. So they're raising money for that. We're, our goal is uh, $200. I think we're about halfway or maybe a little over halfway there. Uh, so a $5 donation is what we're looking for. $5 in the Operation Classroom envelope would be fantastic. Obviously, you can give more than that if you want to. It is a, a great opportunity for us to build a computer lab in Sierra Leone. What a wonderful thing. Also, this is Native American Month. In the United Methodist Church, we have some blank envelopes back there for that. Uh, Anne had sent me a link. Um, the Native American population has been hit even harder than other populations during COVID-19. And so obviously this is one way to, to be able to give toward that. And perhaps we can look in the new year of some other ways that we can help uh, in a very tangible way for that. So please keep those things in mind. We appreciate that. Uh, poinsettia sale continues. We will talk to Sandy about that if you're interested in that. Uh, light walnuts on sale. So if you're doing some baking, and if you're not doing some baking, I want to know why. Um, <laughs> but that's out there. I, I bought my bag. It's in there. So I can do some baking. So just a reminder that that's out there as well. As of right now, the Lions Club drive through breakfast is still a go. I have not heard differently. That will be on November 29th from 8 to 11. So how about this? You don't have to be here for live worship that day. Go out, get some pancakes, sit down and start streaming the worship that I run that day. You got an extra hour to do that. I mean, is that awesome or what? And then be thinking of me as you're enjoying those pancakes because you know I don't do breakfast on Sunday mornings. What a blessing that would be for you, huh? And what an opportunity to be able to, and I, I, I've heard the menu, I know it's, it's you are going to get a, a full container and it's a $5 donation. Obviously you can get more if you would like to. Uh, but what a wonderful opportunity for that. 
Uh, Bible study, I, I know Nancy had asked, uh, I believe this Thursday is supposed to be your scheduled last Thursday night for that. I'm going to say, go for it. Okay, you, you all have been doing a good job of safely distancing and yet still being able to participate in that. Um, I believe that you'll be good to go ahead and, and be with that and that you will be fine. So go with that. Uh, food pantry, uh, the big needs right now continue to be the chunky soups, the spaghettios, dish soap, laundry soap. We appreciate those, any items that you bring in for that. We were blessed Friday. Uh, those who were working here were absolutely worn out. So they're, <laughs> they were exhausted and exhilarated. I know you know what that feeling is like. Uh, with the numbers that they were able to, to assist on Friday uh, was phenomenal. Uh, the team did a great job. Your donations and those coming from the community have done a great job of being able to help some families with some Thanksgiving meals and other items as well. So it's just a great feeling. I know, again, and through, through exhaustion, they were exhilarated, and, and thanks to, to our, all of our volunteers who have helped with that, those who continue to donate that, the organizations that continue to be a big part of that, we really appreciate all that they are doing. It is a great help to our community, and I just can't say enough how much of a blessing it really is to those who need it, and, and they know that they are being taken care of. So. Keep up the awesome work and, and, and feel the blessings of God all around you as you do that. Sue, I think you had an announcement for us this morning. Sue has two announcements for us this morning. I've been in contact with Parker Church in Indiana. They are having, they need to have where to go if they come in and do Christmas shopping. They're going to have a drive through Christmas shopping this year. They were supposed to send me one around. Our sanctuary will look just a little bit different than we've set up the last several years, but not a lot different. So if you have a little bit of time, uh, at least able to help get some stuff down here, and then we can do some finish setting up later if need be. So uh, for those of you at home, if you didn't hear the first announcement, Broadway Christian Parish, we support them uh, quite often through various ways. They used to do a, a Christmas shop. They're going to have a Christmas drive through instead. We will have a list soon of items that we can donate toward that, and we will get that list posted so that we are able to get that word out as well. Are there other announcements this morning? Yes, ma'am. We feel qualified to do that, by the way. <laughs> Again, for those of you at home, Mops is running a Christmas decoration contest. It's going to start here in the next week or so. Uh, $10 entry, a uh, chance to win a, a wonderful uh, a gift basket and a, or a couple other uh, certificates along the way. So check out their uh, Facebook page, and we will get that posted on our page as well once we get up and running. So it's town-wide. Anyone is eligible. What's going to happen is you're going to take a picture or a video of your decorations, and you're going to post them and send them in uh, through Mops. Indoor or outdoor. Wow, that really opens it up. Hey, you can double your chances. $10 for your indoor shot, $10 for your outdoor shot. Why not? Okay. Anything you do, if it's indoor, you have a lot of rooms, but also you can do one for a while. So you have one of each room. 
Be creative with your submission. Because that, that might count for something. Yeah, creativity and your submission. So I'll have to talk, talk with the other judge. So, but, um, but yeah, that is fantastic. What a neat idea, a, a neat little fundraiser for that. So fantastic. Mops keep up the great work. Again, there are a few wreaths left to sale. Maybe get a picture of them and get them posted. Uh, and we can check those out. And again, most people are going to start decorating within the next few weeks. Um, some of us already have our basement decorated. That happened yesterday while I was gone. So it looks wonderful. My family did an awesome job with the, their beginning decorations. We have a tradition on my uh, November class Saturday when I'm normally in Indianapolis, they decorate their, their area downstairs. And so we continue that tradition even though I was only over here instead of in Indianapolis yesterday. But how wonderful it was, they did a good job. We're not submitting for the contest so that we can be fair and impartial. We will only judge the contest. So that is a fantastic idea. Other announcements that you have this morning. So what I heard in class yesterday is that not everybody knows what our mission is. We are a congregation of the United Methodist Church. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You know what that is. I'm pretty sure our community know what it is. And I know our community understands our vision, which is community, compassion, Christ. I trust that you will feel and experience the power of the Holy Spirit working in and you. You should have the expectation. When you come in for Sunday worship, that you're going to feel energized. You're going to, to have God beside you in the pew, working all around you, and that Jesus will be leading us. I encourage you to stand as you're able. Psalm 76 is our call to worship. Page 797 if you need the hymnal. It's also going to be on the screen in front of you. Let us worship God Most High. In truth, to God is known, whose name is great in Israel whose abode has been established in Salem, whose dwelling place is Zion. There God broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of the war. Let us give glory. You are glorious, more majestic than the everlasting mountains. The sovereign was driven with the sword, they sang in the sleep. All the soldiers were unable to use their hands. And your You indeed are to be feared. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? From the heavens you uttered judgment. The earth feared and was still when God arose to establish judgment to save all the oppressed of the earth. Surely you shall praise you. The rest of the wrath you will avert upon you. Make bows to the Lord your God and keep them. I invite you to remain standing for our first hymn, Blessed Be Your Name. Thank you. 
God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Time of our service where we lift our joys and our concerns, and we want to uh, pray with Twyla this morning on the passing of her mom. Um, Twyla, doing okay, Doug? Appreciate that. And it's a difficult time. Surrounded with your love. Cards certainly are always appropriate when, when we're unable to do uh, anything else. We want to pray for the family of Dennis Rogers as well. Uh, some of you know Dennis from here in town. Uh, he passed away earlier this week as well. We talked a little bit about being found in the wilderness or being lost in the desert in our past song. And uh, well, we had some families that went through that this week. But we can give God the glory for his hand of mercy and work that he is doing. And Phil, Sherry, what would you like me to share or not share this morning? Uh, then Todd is on the road to recovery. Todd is home, uh, probably just to end his Yes, that is a good sign. He uh, still has a, a lot of problems, but like I said, it's, uh, it's a good sign. That's what you need is a fresh start with pneumonia. So, five days from now, I hope everything goes good. If anybody here has a question about whether the prayer works or not, check with Sherry. Okay. Make sure you heard that. If you have any questions of whether prayer works or not, and a big, big thank you to our prayer chain, our prayer warriors, who I believe were definitely working overtime this week. Um, we are glad and grateful. We give God the glory for working in his life. Um, it was very difficult for, for many hours during that time, but uh, road to recovery is a wonderful road to be upon. Other joys and concerns that you have this morning. Sam. Yes, two weeks ago, he fell two weeks ago. He may not have gone into the hospital. Well, he's been back and forth. <laughs> but uh, I went in at early in the morning. And we were we got in pretty quick for a half hour. Yeah, they kept you moving, definitely. <laughs> There was COVID patients on the other side, but uh, they got me in there and I went through the MRI and CAT scan, ultrasound. I fractured my 12th vertebrae, but it's not herniated. So the doctor said, you don't want to stay here. I said, we'll send you home for now. And they sent me up with a specialist for my urinary tract and my stomach. It was all infected when I fell. I don't know what broke down there, but they shoved me full of pen penicillin or something like that, and then they gave me one pill for a week. So I said, oh, man, I got a second batch of stronger pills. I, I, take, I took this last week. And then the next week, I go back to see the specialist. But in the hospital, they have masks on, gloves on. That place... Dr. Kim told me that you don't want to stay here. You're better off to go home because it's not herniated. You might be able to heal it. So, thank the Lord he stayed with me. Absolutely. We're glad to have you back with us today. But I have all kinds of muscles. Sure. See, stay off that ladder. <laughs> Betty. Because Nicholas needed some extra credit because, you know, he wrote an essay about a patriot, about his grandpa. And it was turned into the BFW in, in Edwardsburg. And he won first place, which was a hundred dollars. Oh my goodness. And he did, and the essay is going to now be turned into the district, or however. It is. Right, they'll continue to escalate it. Yeah. Yes, and it'll go and, and so. It's a joy. It is a joy. Even though he, he had to do it for extra credit, but yeah. he needed to do it. So anyway, it was... Well, it sounds like it may have started as extra credit, but then he became passionate about it if he wrote something that well. Yeah. And it was a story that was by his grandma. Fantastic. That is awesome. Go ahead, Elaine. Um, our daughter-in-law would like prayers from her mother, who is also fighting COVID. And she's going to step back to her house. Right. We will continue to lift them in prayer as well. Judy. Um, my son from Tennessee and his wife came over to visit. 
Very good. I'm sure it was. So, was it a surprise or did you know they were coming up? Right. Oh, absolutely. That's okay. Yeah. God knows how to keep us safe, even during some times of hugs. Johnny, it's great to have you back with us. Johnny's been traveling, and it's also a good reminder we did celebrate Veterans Day this week. And so, again, to those present who served, uh, to those who have passed who served, to those of you at home who served, uh, uh, just a big thank you. Uh, I uh, appreciate the opportunity that I can go up to several of my coworkers and, and thank them for their service, to thank them personally, uh, as I think that's still something. Our nation has not always done a wonderful job of taking care of our veterans. Uh, we are grateful that within our membership we have someone who is a champion for veterans and has done some tremendous work uh, with our local uh, VA and, and, and other agencies uh, to, to try and improve the services that are available for the veterans of our area. And so Sam, that is greatly appreciated as well. To all of you, thank you for your sacrifice, for your service, thank you to the families your sacrifice, and again, for those that we've lost, to keep a great nation great. We continue to, to lift our nation uh, as we continue to explore uh, where the election is and where that will move forward. Again, we seek unity, a unified voice to take care of, of the people of our nation. We, the people. There is still a tremendous need due to COVID-19 and we continue to love families that have been greatly impacted by this, not just physically, then, and many who have lost. We, we see the numbers around us just skyrocketing. Uh, some of our hospitals are starting to have a very difficult time uh, dealing with this. Their ICU is, is, are starting to fill up again, and we need to continue to pray for our frontline workers. But for families who have lost income, again, prayers for our food pantry, the wonderful work that they're doing. We knew that we would see numbers beginning to rise, and, and that certainly had a big impact on Friday and this coming Friday, where families who are eligible, uh, we're, we're giving them a, a, a complete Thanksgiving dinner, which I th just think is just amazing and wonderful that we're able to make sure that that is taken care of. Other joys or concerns that you have this morning? Yes, Sue. Uh, Joy, my sister in law, thank you. You couldn't have went fairly well. Um, they did put in a court, so it will not be the last one, but we've seen improvements already. That is great. And uh, asking for prayers on uh, Monday is my last ministry day. Please have a patient person. Um, so discouraging. And I have my therapist, my at least a therapist. Mm -hmm. And I can't specifically say that. Sure. But they have taught you some things along the way. Yeah. It's just not the same doing it at home, but yeah. but understood. Yeah. Hopefully. Absolutely. And it, you know, and that, again, I left a prayer that <clears throat> for our nation, we have so many that, that do not have the insurance coverage they need, and there are ways there are ways to work to, to improve that whole situation. And so, again, our prayers for those who are in need of that. Other joys and concerns to lift this morning. It is, again, a joy to be with you, and I, I hope you can sense the, the pain on my heart uh, for us to, to interrupt our, our services for a couple weeks. But know this, there are churches that have not been able to gather back together since the beginning of the pandemic. We've been fortunate to, to go several months again, uh, even this way. And so it, it's, it's with a very heavy heart that I do that, but our bishop sent out a message again this week, and it's just really... Our bishop is not telling our churches what we should do other than to be mindful of what we do and above all to do no harm. We have opportunity to take a, a safe step back. We have an opportunity to again set an example for others that we are mindful of the pandemic that is around us, the disruption that it creates, but that we need to be mindful of those that we serve. You are who we serve. You at home are who we serve. We need to be mindful of all of those around us and keep tabs of 
um, as, as, as Todd found out, you know, go to the hospital, don't wait. And, and, and he had to go a couple different times for them to finally do what they needed to do, but not waiting was a big thing. And so even with our hospitals being overwhelmed, but if there's anything we can do to, to prevent that from happening, that is certainly what we need to do. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy God, we can feel your presence around us, and we are thankful for that. As we have gathered here and at home to worship you, and knowing that we will not be able to gather so much, but we can continue wherever we are, whenever we want, we can worship you. Our hearts pour out to you this day to give you honor and glory, to give you praise and thanksgiving. We do have praises on our hearts. We want to give you the glory. We have seen your hand at work. We have seen once again the power of prayer and your hand of mercy. And we know, we know that you love us. We know that when we pray in faith through your son, Jesus Christ, miracles still happen. Wonderful works still happen. And we give you the glory. We know that there will be a witness and testimony through all of this. It's just, we want to raise our hearts to you and properly thank you for the work that you're doing and the lives of our loved ones and the lives of our co-workers and the lives of our community. Lord, we do lift our community to you as it is at a critical stage as well with COVID-19 numbers continuing to rise, school systems being affected by this. Lord, we pray for your hand of mercy. We know that you have the power to bring this under control. We know that as, as humans, we don't always do the right things, and maybe we could have done more individually to stop the rise in numbers, and, and we know that we need to do that now. But we also pray for those who are already affected by this. Pray for those with the disease. Pray for families who have lost loved ones because of this disease. And again, for our frontline workers, we pray for you to give them energy and strength Continue to be with them and let them know how much we appreciate their efforts through all that is going on. And we lift to you families, families that have been devastated by this COVID-19. Those who have lost loved ones, have loved ones diagnosed, those who've lost income or jobs or opportunities. Lord, the need is very real. And so we pray for the leaders of our nation that they will find ways to continue programs that have been set in place to help those who so desperately need help and have no other way to go and find it. Lord, for those who have lost loved ones this week, we pray for Twyla and the passing of her mom. We pray for the Rogers family. Lord, we just pray that you will be a source of comfort and peace during this time. Lord, for recoveries that are on their way, we give you praise and glory for that. For families able to visit, we give you praise and glory for that. Lord, I thank you for this congregation and the work that these, your people, are doing in your name. They have not shied away from the challenge that has been before us. They have not shut away themselves in fear of what could be. But instead, we are living our faith as you have challenged us to do. Being the hands and feet of your son, Jesus Christ. Reaching with compassion into our community and showing our community the face of Christ. Lord, we pray all these things, and we give you the praise and the glory and thanksgiving for your work. And we give you the rest of this service. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> time of our service where we give of our tithes and our offerings and our gifts back to God this morning. And so... I pray that again you will remember our special collections, Native American Ministries is running throughout the month. We will continue to collect for Operation Classroom until we hit our goal or even beyond that would be fine. Our offertory plates are at a safe place there in the back of the sanctuary for you this morning. And I pray that you will remember that. Uh, wonderful report that we had this week that um, 
Church, we're doing okay. Okay, we're, we're, we're not swimming in cash, but we're not meant to swim in cash. We are able to take care of our needs because of your faithful giving, because of the faithfulness of those who are unable to be with us in worship and continue to send in their tithes and offerings. And because of that, we are able to continue with our connection and give accordingly to our conference and to our district and to our church at large. So thank you for your faithfulness. It means a lot during this time. Will you join me in the offertory prayer that is on the screen? Generous God, your good gifts to us are too many to name. We have been so blessed, not so that we might hide away these blessings, but to use them so that the blessings might be multiplied. As we give from our blessing stockpile, help it to multiply and grow. May our gifts empower multiple acts of mercy and compassion. And may your love pour over this world like a flood. If we have buried these gracious blessings, may today be the day we dig them up and put them to work, so that we might be seen as your faithful servants. Amen. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 301, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. Thank you. 
I would encourage you to remain standing for the reading of our gospel, Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. The parable of the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of these servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servants. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who received the one talent came and he said, Master, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bakers. So when I returned, I received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even one, what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthy servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know, either I'm fired up or it's warm in here. It could be a combination of both. Lucky for you if it's only warm in here. Let us see, not as the world sees. When we look at the scripture lesson this morning, we read the words in Matthew, we hear Jesus talking in the parable that is given there. Sometimes, if we misread it, just look at the end of it, and we think that there's a harshness there. So, three servants were called, and they were each given something in, and the master went away for a while, and when he came back, we found that the two of the servants had doubled what had been given to them, but one servant, who knew how harsh his master could be, did nothing with it. Hid it away. When time of account settling came up, the two that had doubled, they brought what was the master's and they gave it to him. And it was, the master was happy with that. But the one who had done nothing came forward and said, Master, I know that you are able to do, you're able to be all that is around you. You take what is not yours. You harvest where you have not sown seed. I hid this away so that I can bring it back to you. Now, obviously, the master was not happy. And this parable is sometimes very difficult to read and to understand. Because too often we look at it through the eyes of this world, not through the eyes of Jesus. There are two reasons I grabbed these this morning. Because I actually can read the print pretty well in this particular Bible. But to demonstrate and to illustrate that sometimes we have to have aids for our eyes. I'm no different than you are. I just wear contacts all the time because since I was in third grade, I've worn glasses. My vision has been such that I have always needed an aid to see since the third grade. Probably if I was honest, maybe I would have noticed it in second grade, but I at least realized it in third grade. Okay, you know, light came on. Have I told you I'm just a little dead sometimes? Oh, you already knew that. <laughs> Thank you for, for that. Amen. 
See not as the world sees. Folks, too often our eyes become fixated upon what the world is presenting and because we look at it through the eyes of the world, Jesus is calling us to see beyond that. Jesus is calling us to look with his vision to see that which is around us. But if you ever uh, raised horses or did any kind of, uh, if you ever had a horse bridle to anything, a, a carriage of some type, you know, what do they do with horses? They put the, the blinders on them. They want the horses to see what is in front of them. Not to be dissuaded by what's around them. Not to have their attention taken over here. And, oh, hey, there's a cornfield. I'm just going to go over here. No, they want to, you know, keep on track for where they're at. Too often, we have taken those blinders off in the world and we're distracted by the glitz and the glamour and all that is around us. ADHD has nothing on humanity. We are easily distracted if we're honest with ourselves. Even when our heart is set on glorious things, even when we're trying to, to focus upon the cross and do the things of God, still too often something will come around and will distract us and will, will take us off of that path. I'm not saying that we need blinders on, but I'm saying we need to look through the eyes of Jesus to the world around us. One of the challenges that we have as, as pastors is that at least once a year we have to fill out a form that says, what is your ministry doing? What is your church doing? What are you good at? And I really think that one of the things that our church is doing much better at, and we've been doing this for some time now, this isn't something new, is that we're beginning to really see the community around us and understand the work that we have to do. Not just the physical work, not just the work of, of, of feeding and clothing the, the, the poor and those who are in need, but truly starting to see the least, the, the, the lost, the lonely of, of our world, and finding ways to make a difference in their lives. Now, it's been a little bit more challenging through COVID-19 because we could not physically interact with so many as we wanted to in the past. I get that. It just means we're going to have to double our efforts in 2021. So I hope you kind of enjoyed your respite this year because um, that's going to be over soon. And we've got work to do. Okay. I was hoping to maybe get a little giggle or laughter or something like out of that. Y'all, are y'all with me this morning? Are we trying to see through the eyes of Jesus and ignoring the poor soul who's up here trying to bring the message this morning? We are starting to have that vision. We're starting to see, but beyond that, there is more that we need to do. So we are seeing the least. We are seeing the lost, and we are sitting with, spending time with the lonely. But more than that, we have seen this year the social unrest because we are at a crossroads as a nation, understanding those who have been held back for some time, the oppressive nature of even our great country. And so we need to take the next step to how can we liberate those who are oppressed? And those who are oppressed are in many different ways. They might be a physical oppression. So how can we help those who who are wheelchair bound or, or don't have access to proper medical care? What about those who are emotionally challenged? What are we doing to make sure that they have access to what they need as a community? Do we have the services in our area that we need for those, whether they be counseling services or whatever they need be? Do we have those readily available and are people aware of those services? And what are those oppressed spiritually? We certainly need to make sure that we are not just the hands and feet of Christ, but we are witnessing to and testifying of our faith. And we are Jesus for those who do not yet know who Jesus is. More and more people are indeed looking for a, a to fill a spiritual need. Wesley's provenient grace is working overtime right now. We know that God is reaching into the lives of those who are spending far more time at home than perhaps they would like to. For some, they are forced there. For some, they have no choice because they've, they've lost jobs. And they're beginning to lose hope. And they don't have a faith to rely on. I know I am preaching to people who know what faith is. 
And I want to encourage you to continue to practice your faith and see through the eyes of Jesus where that faith will lead you to, and not just the blessings that have been unlocked by that, but the power and the blessings that others have received because of the work that you are doing. Be encouraged this day. Look not as the world looks. How does the church view our, how does, I'm sorry, how does the community view our church? How does the community view the ministries that we are involved in? And how does the community view the ministries that you personally are involved in? For those of you who were here for our charge conference, and I get apologize for the difficulties, and yes, I did touch the computer this morning, but it's working right now. We did hear again the challenge to be a missional church. And all I can say is apparently some churches just don't quite understand that yet because I truly believe that we are understanding that and we are starting to walk that walk. Missional church means that what are we doing as individuals to make a difference in the lives of those around us? A positive difference in the name of Jesus Christ for those around us. You have opportunities daily to do that and I have seen you doing that. And how does the community view that? Quite positively, let me tell you that the work that you are doing is known. And that is a wonderful thing. You're able to impact. There are people who are struggling. Long before COVID came, we had people in our community struggling because they did not understand what faith could be. They did not know who Jesus was. And now they have opportunity to know that. And as they get around you more often, even, even through masks or through glass or even from a distance, they can see Jesus at work in your life. They can understand what, what does it mean to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They're understanding who Jesus is because you're showing that to them. Because through Jesus' eyes, you are seeing a need that is around you. Our challenge is not to be caught up into what we have been doing. Our challenge is to set our sights on what still needs to be done. For God has a will and purpose here and now for our church, for our ministries, for us as individuals. There is work for us to do. We have to see that work. We have to have a vision that sees the need around us and also to have a vision to say how we as a church are going to do something about that. The reason we have a vision statement as a church for those of you at home, say it with me again, community, compassion, Christ, I knew you could get it. The reason we have that vision statement is that it's a gauge for all that we try to do in ministry. If we are applying effort and resource, time and money and energy toward any effort, it should satisfy at least one, if not all three of those components. It should be something that will help energize our community. It should be done with the mindfulness of compassion as we are making a difference in the lives of those around us. And the focus should always be upon Christ. It should always be upon Christ. When we live our vision, amazing things happen. We've seen that. Our vision statement's been in place for a few years now, and we do gauge our ministries toward that. And we have seen a transformation of our community. And that continues. But that is a visioning process. Our leadership team, their challenge is, is to hear and see the needs around us. Bring those to the table and discuss how can we go about doing something about it. Can we as an individual church, do we need to partner with someone? The partnerships that we have in our community are fantastic. And we need to grow those partnerships. So that together we can be more successful. Other agencies are more successful because of the work that we do with and for them. And our reach extends farther and farther when we partner with those organizations as well. Let us see not as the world. Let us not get caught up in what is going around just closely to us. But let us with the vision of Jesus see how we can impact the world in which we live in a new and different way, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And it begins by allowing Jesus to take our lives and use them. We are tools of his love. We are vessels of hope. 
Let us live our faith together. We stand and join in singing hymn number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. of God the Creator give you strength. May the presence of God the Redeemer give you peace. May the presence of God the Sustainer give you comfort. May the presence of God the Sanctifier give you love. Amen. 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 Amen.